if you're going to paint the same Christmas card over and over again, you need a simple enough design to do that. And so I am going to paint this Christmas candle, and Christmas candles just lend themselves to bouquet. So I'll be showing that at the end. I also have learned a brand new technique that I figured out myself, and I've never seen anybody else demonstrate it, so I'm going to teach you that today too. On my palette, I have Pyro Red, Gamboge, Hazel Yellow. This is a mixture of Hooker Green and Thalo Blue, um, and this is a mixture of Thalo Green and Dioxacene Purple, Indigo and Thalo Blue Red Shade. We're going to start with the candle, and I want to make it a little bit of a tan. And then that needs to be watered down, so I'm going to do that over here. And I think my light's going to come from this direction, so this side of the candle will be lighter. And also candles tend to be darker as they go down because they don't have any light shining in them. And I'm not getting it too smooth because there's shadows and lights in the room. And so I'm not worried about it being too smooth. And back here, I'm just going to put a little bit more lip to it. Where the wax is melted, it would be a little bit see-through. And then I'm going to follow some of this where the wick is. And under here, it'll be pretty dark. And if there's enough detail there, I think I'm going to get my skinny brush. This is a 00 Silver Atelier Squirrel Blend, and oh my goodness, it has such a great point. I love it. Now the background, I'm going to make dark on the light side and lighter on the dark side. So I need this to be completely dry so that it doesn't run into it. I'm getting my big brush out. This is a Princeton Neptune number no. 6. And I'm going to go and get some dark color on this side of this candle. Not trying to make it too perfect there. I want it to have a little bit of an impression look, impressionist look and some of the other color that I have here as well. And this will make this look brighter, pop out to a little bit. And this, I want this to move into yellows. And I'm just gonna stick it in. That has a bit of green in it, but that's okay. I'm just leaving a little bit of an impression of a wick. And then this is gonna just kinda go on up. I covered my little spot that goes up there though. I don't want to do that. So I want this little wispy thing to go up. So I'm going to remove some paint there and let it go up. This side, I want it to be some yellows, but not too loud. Right here, I'm just going to have to add more green, I think. Maybe the bouquet will take care of it. Now, if you want, I see lots of candles done with a big round thing, and that looks kind of cool, too. If you like that, you can do that. So some of this that looks bumpy and lumpy, you know, it'll be fine because it'll be, it'll have the bouquet on it. In fact, I'm going to just put little bits of this brown over here, too, because of the bouquet. Now, this flame, I'm going to just rub that all in so that it's not a very defined flame, but you can make it a defined flame. This is your painting. You can adjust however you want and let it go around the berries. And I'm also going to just fill in with this color some. I still can't find it. So it goes here. Lighten the end. I want the yellow on this flame to come into the candle a little bit so that it defines it, the bottom of the flame a little. Now I have another new technique that I'm going to show you that's fun for berries. This is an eraser. I'm going to put the really flat side down and my berries are just going to be red on one side 
And on the other side, I'm just going to do alizarum crimsons because it's darker. I just press it into the alizarum first, get it about half inked, and then get it the whole way inked on there. You get this round berry. So I'm going to go in with this with the alizarum for the berries that are a bit behind. Now I want to do my bouquet before I do my brand new technique that I was telling you about. For that you need a stencil and some stencil brush. They look better if they're all different sizes. And you could maybe get a glow here if you really want a round glow with one of these. And I'm just going to show you how I would do that. I dip my brush in the water press it into the cellulose sponge, and then I would just do these edges. So we get rid of some of that green on that side, dip the brush again, and get rid of some of that on that side, but not really mess with the middle too much. And there you have a circular thing. But now I want one to overlap with that a little bit, a smaller one. Just gonna go around a couple times, sop it up. These ones, I'm not gonna make any of them too bright. I'm just taking a little ink off. You do need to dry the back of your stencil because if you come over here with that green on there, you definitely will mess things up. You should rinse your brush every now and then to get the extra color out of it. Now this dark area, I don't want it to get too light. That's probably enough for over there. Now you have to really rinse your brush when you move into the lighter area. If you like this video, I'd love it if you would send me a note or hit the like or subscribe. Don't forget to overlap them. I kind of accidentally discovered this. It was really fun. I'm going to use this pen tip to do my pine needles. And the cool thing is, it's just gonna be done with paint. So it's still going to be a painting. And I put it on with a brush. Look how easy that is compared to painting. So much more control. some splatters up there. So I, you want to re-ink it, not over your paper like I just did. Sometimes you have to reload your brush too, not just your pen. We have a little bit of shadow of the candle coming down. You could also make some little pine shadows. This I'm going to just go across and fill in that white. Then I am going to take my tape off, see what it looks like, and then decide if it needs anything else. There's something about taking the tape off and having those clean edges that helps you see the composition better. I put this painting in my windowsill overnight and just kept looking at it. And I've seen a few, th the composition is a little bit crazy because there's this big blob and then there's this big dark area. And I think the dark needs to move into this side a little bit and maybe some yellows up here. And I have some indigo here that I've watered down quite a bit. And I'm gonna bring the dark along this edge, immediately watering it down. Letting the smoke go up and get thinner as it gets to the top so that it looks a little bit wispy. So right now I'm getting this one, two, three thing, which isn't too bad with light. I'm gonna get my better brush. Well, not better, but a pointier brush. And I'm gonna roll it so that it has a good tip on it. And then get in here. And then last thing, we'll go over with the ink pen again. The other thing that I noticed that's driving me crazy is that this perspective looks off here because the curve went up too far. And I need to straighten this edge where this candle is and then this curve is okay. Yeah. 
No, I could keep tweaking this forever. It needs, but there's just a few things. It needs a lip right there. So it needs a little bit of a darker spot um, to make it make sense. Now I get to have the fun of doing these needles again. I'm just mixing some phthalo green with my indigo this time. So a little bit more intense color. Another advantage that I just love about this is that you can just mix any color. You can use the colors that are already in your painting and yet have these wonderful fine lines. One of the things that I did too that I, I didn't have in my first half of my demo is put a little white speck on each of the berries. Okay, that was about a 10 minute fix unless you go put some more bouquet in. Let me know how your Christmas card making goes.